In the last video, I talked to you about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, what that means, and what different denominations believe about it, and that I kind of think God is really more interested in our unity than our division. Today, I'm going to talk to you about some of my experiences with the Holy Spirit and what the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been like for me and different stages of my journey. If you haven't watched my video where I talk about my experiences with water baptism and at different stages of my journey, then I would recommend that you watch that before you watch this so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. But let's start when I was around eight years old and I was at that vacation Bible school and I asked Jesus into my heart. <laughs> so what I'm going to tell you, all the things I'm going to share in this are all reflection. These are not things that I knew in the moment. They're not things, awarenesses that I had. These are things that I can look back on and I can see with the information, the knowledge that I have now and the awareness I have now that I can see these things present in my story or not present in this case, and that is that nothing changed in my life. I did not receive the Holy Spirit that day because my heart was not truly turned to God. I was not repentant. I was just being taught to be fearful about going to hell. And so nothing changed in my life, including receiving the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so then when I was 20 and I had a more intimate encounter with God and I was aware that God existed and I even started going to church, and and got baptized but when i look back on that i know i did not receive the holy spirit and thereby i would not consider myself a true follower of christ how do i know that i didn't receive the holy spirit well when i think about what changed later that was not present and one of those things specifically is that when we receive the Holy Spirit, when we are truly following God, our communication with God begins to start being internal and external. So prior to receiving the Holy Spirit, communication with God is external. And that can be through the Word of God, the Bible, that can be through some external event, that can be through somebody's testimony, that can be through a friend who's sharing Jesus with us. That can be, it can be a lot of different things. They're just all external to us. And I made a video about how we know the difference between internal and external experiences of God. So you can watch that if you want more information. But I know that I did not have any internal communication with God at that time. And what I also know is that when I stopped going to church, I moved to a space of calling myself spiritual but not religious. And I spouted off a lot of things that are absolutely not true. And I believed them at the time. But what I know is that the, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, would have spent some time correcting me, would have done some things during that time. Had I received the Holy Spirit, there would have been more internal conviction about the things that I was saying and doing that were not even remotely accurate. <laughs> and so, because I was very open to those things, open to correction and open to learning. And so I know about myself that I am very sensitive to the Holy Spirit's correction. And I would have noticed those things if they'd been happening, but they were not. And then when we get to when I'm 30 and that is when everything changed for me. And I can say that everything changed then, including receiving the Holy Spirit. Now, I did not have some grand moment that I was what the Pentecostal tradition would have considered baptism of the spirit where I received a gift of tongues at the same time. That did not happen. Um, it, it was unnoticeable to me at the time, I know things changed. I knew that my relationship with God was changing. I knew that everything in my life and my desires were changing, but I didn't like have some like external moment that I recognized I received the Holy Spirit. And I can look back now and I can see that there was a distinct change in my communication with God and it very much was internal. Now that doesn't mean that the external stopped, it, it didn't, but it did begin to be internal as well. And I, I think that this is really where I benefited from not growing up in the church. I didn't have all the church baggage, all the things that you should and shouldn't do and all the things that are right and all the things that are wrong. And I didn't know 
I didn't have any baggage. I didn't have any, you know, religious dogma. I didn't have any traditions. I didn't have anything in my mind that was inhibiting my ability to engage with the Holy Spirit. I just trusted everything that I was experiencing and thought that that's just what everybody experienced and how everybody's relationship with God was. I didn't realize that it it doesn't often go this way for people. A lot of that has to do with the fact that when you're raised in the church, there is certain baggage that you bring into your relationship with God. And a lot of that is based on teachings that are not consistent with scripture and or things that are tradition and religion that are religious dogma that are handed down that aren't necessarily consistent with scripture or that make it seem as though things have to happen a very specific way. And I, like while I'm on that, I just want to clarify that like with the stages of faith, these are just kind of like brackets around like what happens in our faith journey, but how everything comes to pass in that faith journey, how the Holy Spirit communicates with you, how God draws you in, how God leads you to repentance, like all the things that happen in your journey are going to be specific to you. And this isn't a formula. This is not um, me saying that like everything has to follow a very specific pattern. I mean, there is a pattern but it is a very loose kind of like bracket around things that happen. And within that bracket, what they look like is different for everybody. But we do have stages of development in our faith journey. It's just that what happens within those stages is very different for every person. So one of the things that I can look back on during that time is that uh, whenever the Lord led me to quit my job as a business analyst, and I had time that I had about a month and a half or so, month to month and a half, two months before I went to school, which God led me to go back to school, go to college. And during that time, I spent all my time with God. I mean, I occasionally hung out with some other believers, but found that time, um, one, more infrequent than I would have liked to be. And I don't know that that time was as beneficial for me as in growing towards the Lord as I would have liked for it to be. But I spent a lot of time in solitude and silence with the Lord. And I didn't know that that wasn't normal. I didn't know that people didn't do this for extended periods of time. I didn't know that any silence and solitude was uncommon in the Protestant tradition. But I spent significant amounts of time with just me and the Lord. And I would read and read and read and read and read my Bible. I'd read anything I could get my hands on about God. I would spend time journaling. I would spend uh, time, I mean, I just praying, like just talking to God and listening. And I, for a long time, <laughs> you might need to be a little bit older to know this reference, but I used to explain to people that it felt like there was like a telephone, telephone line that was between me and the Lord and that the way that I would communicate with him. It just felt like everything just traveled through this line and I could hear him so clearly, like as if I was talking to him on the telephone. I had really deep, intimate time with the Lord that I didn't realize that other people didn't have as a common occurrence. And it was during that time that my complete mindset just changed about so many things. And it's really hard for me to explain, but other than like just saying I got like a download from God, I don't know how to explain it, but there were things that I just knew that I didn't know how I knew. Over the years, as I have been reading and as I've been learning and as I've been growing, it's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's how I knew. Like I didn't explicitly read it at that point. There was so much in the Bible that I hadn't read. I didn't understand it. I was literally just learning about God for the very first time. So can you imagine like reading through the Bible for the very first time without having anybody really guiding you other than Sunday sermons and just kind of trying to figure it out on your own? And yeah, I wasn't because the Holy Spirit was guiding me. There are things that the Holy Spirit imparted to me and gave me this gift of knowledge that I wouldn't have otherwise had on my own because there's no way that I could have known all the things that I knew in that short time. And it was the Holy Spirit accelerated my learning by pretty much downloading all of it into my brain without me having to do the years and years and years and years of study 
that I now have done, but I just knew those things before I knew why I knew them. Here's the thing that's really funny. Within I probably the first like, I don't know, three to six months of of really committing my life to Christ, I still didn't know who the Holy Spirit was because I just really needed to remind y'all, like I went into this not knowing anything. And I was like a blank slate of understanding scripture. So I remember distinctly the very first time I remember somebody talking to me about the Holy Spirit and I'm sure somebody said something about the Holy Spirit. I'm sure I even read about the Holy Spirit in scripture, but it was one of those things that I probably glossed over because I didn't know what it meant. And so, you know, sometimes the first time you're reading something and you don't know what it means, you have a tendency to just gloss over it, especially when you're reading the Bible. There's so much that doesn't make sense for a while that it's easy just to skip over the things that you're not sure about. And I'm sure that I had probably done that. But the first time somebody spoke to me about the Holy Spirit, specifically, I was sharing something with them that God was telling me. And I think if I remember correctly, it was some kind of conviction about something. And they were like, oh, it sounds like the Holy Spirit is convicting you. And that moment, you know, that moment when you're like, I don't have any idea what they're talking about. I don't know what they're saying, but I don't want to look stupid. So I'm not going to say anything right now. I'm just going to pretend like I know what they're talking about. That, that's what I did. I didn't want to look stupid. <laughs> so, because there were so many things. And I, I, listen, I wouldn't have looked stupid if I would have said, I don't know who the Holy Spirit is. And he would have been really kind to me. I know he would have been, but I felt silly that I didn't know at that point that I was following this God. And I'm like, I don't have any idea who the Holy Spirit is, but I got home immediately And I was like, I got to do some research. I got to figure out who the Holy Spirit is. And then when I figured it out, I was like, this makes total and complete sense to me. Like, this is God. Like, I've been communicating with God. I got this telephone line with God. uh, The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is God. (laughs) Holy Spirit is a person. And that's who I've been communicating with. Like, there was no confusion for me at that point. No misunderstanding. Like, I have, a lot of people have a problem with the Holy Spirit. They have difficulty understanding the Holy Spirit. I have no confusion about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit and I have been like this for a long time. My confusion has always been with Jesus. It's taken me years, years to unpack Jesus. And I've had several like distinct breakthrough moments in my journey where like, I feel like I've progressed in deepening my understanding of Jesus and who he is and Um, I mean, some of those have even been in the past year that like significant breakthroughs in understanding Jesus, like as it just deepens and deepens and deepens like over time of my understanding of him. But it took me a really long time to really grasp Jesus. But the Holy Spirit, I didn't have any problems once I knew who the Holy Spirit was. But I just didn't understand that, that moment who it was. And so I felt silly. But I digress. Have I had what the Pentecostal tradition calls baptism of the Holy Spirit. Do I have the gift of speaking in tongues? I do not. (laughs) That is a gift that the Holy Spirit, that the Lord has not imparted to me. And I don't know why. That is not one of my gifts. I'm not opposed to people speaking in tongues. I have heard some people speak in tongues and I've had, you know, two different experiences. I've had times that I'm like, I don't know about this, this whole like needing an interpreter business. Like, how do we know that's really what that person said? How do we know that's what God said? No, we can't verify for sure that that's really what it comes down to. But then there's other times that, that, that I've heard somebody speaking in tongues and then heard the interpretation. And it's been so unbelievably comforting for me. Like it was a word, like it was a word. And I know that that was God. And so I'm not opposed to it. I think it's a gift that the Lord can utilize for edifying his church, but I don't have it. And so, but I'm not opposed to it. I think some people feel like that makes me biased against it. And that that's why I think that we don't have to, to demonstrate it, to be baptized in the spirit. But honestly, I don't think there's enough scripture to bear that out. There's just not. And, and in my last videos, I talked about like, it's not one of the gifts that Jesus demonstrated. There's one mention by him and it's, it's a text that was not in the original manuscripts. And so I, I'm hesitant to say that this is something that we need to put so much hope in having 
and so much of our faith wrapped up in that we allow it to prevent us from pursuing God and seeing the gifts that he has given us and to live fully in those and appreciate what we do have rather than what we don't have. And so it's not about a bias. It's, it's about there are other gifts. And even Paul says that these other gifts are to be more highly sought. And again, more important than all of them is love. But for me, there was no like big external moment. There was no day of Pentecost moment for me where like all of a sudden I just like knew and anybody around me would know. But I do know that the people who've been around me have observed the gifts of the spirit that the Lord has given me. And I know this because when I was in Bible college, well before I realized I had any gifts, some of the young women that went to school would seek me out for mentoring. And there was even one time VP community had, there was a young lady that had shared some information and he came to me seeking to try and start meeting with her. And I was like, I mean, the stuff that she was struggling with, I was like, I don't have any experience with these things. And he felt like I was the right person to mentor her. And there was clearly some gifts that were evident, gifts of wisdom. And I'm not saying like that I'm super wise. I'm saying that there were things that I could impart to other people that this Holy Spirit enabled me to do. And that was evident to people and more mature believers around me. And I did start to realize over time that the gift of knowledge and the gift of prophecy were gifts that the Lord had given me. And there have been times that the Lord has asked me to speak, speak a specific word to someone. There's been some really uncomfortable times with that. There was one time that the Lord asked me to say something to someone and I didn't want to do it. And I ended up not doing it and because it was so uncomfortable. And I knew that the moment I left, I had done the wrong thing and I tried to go back and the person was gone and I wasn't able to do it. And that is probably one of my biggest regrets because it was years, like on probably, probably almost a decade before the Lord started speaking to me in that same way again. And it's not that he didn't speak to me at all. He did, but he just didn't speak to me in that way. And losing that gift for a time was pretty devastating. And it was one of those moments that I was like, I just knew I was like, I was not obedient and I should have been obedient. And um, it had been a test and I did not pass that test. And I didn't get to hear the, the Lord like that for probably about 10 years again. And it's only been in the past like year and a half that the Lord started speaking to me in that way again. And I will not be making that mistake again, no matter how uncomfortable it is. And there have already been times that it has been really, really incredibly uncomfortable and I've not wanted to do it. But I do not want the Lord to withdraw that gift from me again and speaking to me in that way again. But I'll do whatever he says. I think that over the years, there are some gifts that might have been present early on, but have increased, especially in the past two to three years, um, gift of faith and a gift of discerning spirits that has increased substantially. With the things that I've gone through in the past two to three years, those two gifts have increased very substantially. Um, and I think some of it out of necessity of the situation of the things that I've been going through, but the Lord intentionally through the Holy Spirit has given me those gifts in increasing measure for which I'm very thankful. Let's go back to tongues for a minute. So the only thing that I can even remotely begin to say that I might have experienced that, but in a tiny measure was going on a mission trip to Honduras. I had taken Spanish in high school and I'd forgotten most of it because it was, you know, over 10 years after high school. And I didn't use it very often other than basic words. And went to Honduras on a mission trip. And suddenly, like many words that I hadn't used for about a decade, suddenly I remembered. It wasn't anything that I hadn't ever learned before, I don't think. But it was like brought to mind in a way that I hadn't utilized in a very long time. And I was able to very easily remember what those words were. So maybe, but like it was a known language and it would have been a very, very small 
demonstration of the gift of speaking in tongues as if, if we're calling it another language. But as far as a spiritual language and angelic language between me and the Lord, no. But here's the thing. In Romans 8, 26 and 27, it talks about the Spirit interceding for us. When we have unspoken groanings, when we don't know what to pray, that the Spirit will intercede on our behalf and will pray the will of God for us. And I have had moments like that. They were in English, but there have been moments where I have been on the floor, bawling my head off, crying with those unspoken groanings and just not knowing what to pray and asking the Spirit to intercede for me and feeling the Spirit intercede for me. And I have no idea what the Spirit was praying, but I could feel it. I could feel the Spirit interceding. And that has happened for me on more than one occasion. So... I think that when we talk about praying in the spirit, I, for those of you who don't have the gift of speaking in tongues, please, 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 please do not think that you cannot be included in that. When you are in one of those moments where you're like, I just don't know anymore. I don't know what to pray. And I'm beside myself because I know that something needs to be prayed and I don't know what it is. Ask the Spirit to intercede for you. The Spirit will intercede for you. Sit back and and just be present because you can feel the Spirit interceding on your behalf if you pay attention. At the end of the day, um, I've barely scratched the surface on my experiences with the Holy Spirit. Again, this is one of those things that I really think that not having grown up in the church gave me the ability to be more open to the things of the Spirit because I didn't come into a lot of this with awarenesses of how things should be. I, I didn't come in with any of that. And I think that if a lot of people could become more aware of the fact that the Holy Spirit is a person that we engage with, that just happens to reside within us when we are saved, turn our life to God, Holy Spirit resides within us, and we can and should engage with that person. We can have internal communication with the Spirit of God. And the more that we talk to the Spirit, the more that we engage with the Holy Spirit, the more intimacy that we have with God, the deeper and deeper our relationship with God grows. And it is through the spiritual practices that we deepen that relationship with the Holy Spirit. When we become attuned to the Holy Spirit and we start listening more, and these were things that I was doing at the very beginning of my faith journey. And I had no idea they were spiritual practices. They were just the things that the Lord led me to do in my time. And I didn't realize until many years later that these were actually spiritual practices. These were actually things that do help us grow and deepen our relationship with the Lord. And I cannot state enough how important these are. If you want to have a deeper relationship with God, if you want to grow in spiritual maturity, these spiritual practices are so important because they help you pay attention to the Holy Spirit. But until you treat the Holy Spirit like a person who wants to have a relationship with you, who desperately loves you and wants your time more than any other being on the earth, and you start actually engaging with the Holy Spirit, everything will change. All right, that wraps up the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the next video, we are going to start talking about the do as I do stage.